So today I want to talk about one of these um, P2210T Dell monitors. Um, getting a lot of these um, that are going bad after about, I would say probably three to five years in service. And uh, most of the time it's going to be a capacitor that's relatively inexpensive to replace. That is the cause. Uh, to determine that, um, one thing I usually do is I'll plug in the monitor after removing it from the base. Um, and I'll see if it'll power on uh, and exhibit sort of the classic symptoms of uh, what I think is going to be the problem. And that's going to be that the uh, monitor does power on. So you can see, uh, you know, it, it's powered on here when I push the button, but nothing happens on the screen. So the screen just remains dark, black, you can't really see anything. Um, and uh, it looks like the backlight is uh, not working at all. So uh, the easiest way to fix that is to um, open the monitor up and um, first I'll remove the power and uh, I've already removed it from the base um, and I'll go ahead and open this up and we'll go and take a look at the capacitors and see if uh, they need replacing. The easiest way I find to open the monitor up is to um, grab sort of part of the bezel here at the very top. Um, you can just find an edge here um, that's going to be uh, easier to remove than others and just push really hard um, until you get some of the base to come off. Um, so you can see here, um, there's like a little gap now and I can start to pull um, the bezel off. So I'm gonna continue doing that um, around. If you like, uh, sometimes you can use a pry tool to help um, with it, but I usually just find that, um, you know, using some pressure on your fingers works best. So I'll go ahead and remove this and speed up the video a little bit. So now we can remove the back base and essentially most of the electronics are going to be within this um, loosely taped on um, uh, sort of package and I found it pretty difficult to remove the entire thing um, uh, and then sort of get it back in place so what I usually do is I'll go ahead and remove these connectors first. All right, so I um, actually found out that um, removing the one connector on this side here um, is kind of a pain in the ass. So I'm gonna leave that one in. Um, I've kind of uh, cleaned my work first surface so it's clean and I don't have any like large particles on there that can scrape my LCD. And um, I've uh, removed a piece of tape here on this side, on the very far side, um, basically removed that. So I can flip the whole thing over um, and get a look at the electronics inside. So um, essentially this is what the, uh, the circuit boards, there's a couple of circuit boards in here and that's what they're going to look like. And I think the meat of the situation is that we're going to want to go at is going to be on this one here. So I'll take that one out. So there are going to be a couple of screws holding this thing in place. Um, and a couple of brackets as well. So there's uh, these two brackets here and here, which you can kind of push back um, that uh, um, hold the circuit board in place. Uh, there is a screw right here, and then there's a screw on the back um, right here. So I'll remove that one first. Flip it over, remove the screw up here. And um, so then, yeah, it's going to be a matter of sort of jimmying the thing out of here. Oh, I'm sorry. There's two more screws that are um, holding this plug in, so you'll have to remove those. So, remove those two. And now we should be able to pull this out of here and take a look. And so... Um, yeah, we can see right away that there's uh, probably three capacitors on here that are bad. Um, you can see this um, usually by swelling. So you can see here these capacitors are swollen. There's one, two, three, four that are definitely swollen. 
Um, this one back here looks normal. That one looks normal. So these these four here, these this one here look normal, but these four here in this grouping, one, two, three, four, all look like they're swollen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and desolder these, um, remove the caps, and replace them with some cheap ones that I bought on eBay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, start um, removing some of these caps. So the first one is this one here. Go ahead and what I usually do is I'll, I'll hold my thumb on the bottom and kind of wiggle it back and forth while I heat this solder up so I can yank it out of there. And there's our first one uh, desoldered here. And so the way to read um, the way to read these uh, capacitors is essentially um, on the side. There's going to be um, the um, the UF value and the voltage, and you'll want to match that. So, oops, let's see here. Get that to zoom in. Yeah, so this is a um, 330 microfarad, uh, 35 volt capacitor, and so we'll want to replace that with uh, one that's equivalent. All right, so I've removed all my four capacitors that were causing that were swollen. So there's the three areas where they were. Um, one thing to note is um, so here is the um, the old ones. Um, one thing to note is that the the way the circuit board is marked here is you'll have um, a white area and a sort of a clear area. Um, you'll want to go ahead and line your new capacitors up such that the um, the K, the wire that comes out of the white area uh, goes into the the white portion. So um, usually the way I install them is I'll go ahead and thread my new caps through um, the proper holes so that they're um, they're sitting in there, and then I'll solder them in from the other side and trim the wires up. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and place them all in in the proper order they were. Make sure that the uh, the white sides of the capacitor is all lined up to the white side of my circuit board marking, and then I'll get soldering. So after attaching my uh, capacitors um, to the circuit board, I fold back these wires usually just to keep them in place, and so I have an easier time soldering them in. And, um, and then I just you know I'll go ahead and solder them in, and. Uh, And we'll go ahead and uh, test it up. So reinstalling the circuit board is um, just a tiny little bit tricky. There's a notch all the way up here. It's a little hard to see, but essentially, uh, instead of using an extra screw, they use that to sort of hold the circuit board in place. So you're gonna just sort of wedge it in there, um, and um, that should hold it in place. Alrighty, so I've got my connectors um, for the um, backlight uh, connected back. I've got uh, my USB connector still connected on this side here, uh, which I never disconnected. And uh, we never disconnected this e uh, cable either. We just sort of folded it over with the tape um, that holds it in place. Um, and uh, essentially, now that we've got this thing sort of loosely back on here held in place by tape and cables um, we're ready to um, power this thing on and see if it actually works I'm gonna put my frame with the power button over here um, and just kind of tilt up the LCD so that we can see if it actually works plug in my power um, before I assemble things back so we're gonna go grab my power cable which is right here and uh, plug that in here and um, I'm gonna go and make sure our power is turned on. Uh, there it is. I'm gonna look at our screen. 
and you can see here um, that it's already working because I have a um, I can see the uh, the input selections right there so the LCD is up and running now and it's working and has been fixed so it's got a backlight uh, it's good to go we're gonna go ahead and put things back together and I'll do it all right, so now we're just gonna connect the uh, monitor up to some power and uh, DVI cable, make sure everything looks proper. I'm gonna go ahead and connect that up. There's a beautiful. There's our DVI and uh, um, power, and uh, then we're just gonna go ahead and post this baby up. And there we go. It's got a beautiful screen still. That's it. And the menu buttons work too, which is great. So um, I can adjust my brightness and my contrast and get into the menu. Um, but yeah, that's essentially all that you need to do with these monitors is replace those four capacitors and uh, maybe clean it up a bit, a little dirty. But other than that, this is a brand new good garage monitor. Um, so that's all I have. Have a good one.